ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah wa khayrul hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharrul umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours whether you think it's good or bad everything we newly invent is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kullu dalalatin fil nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire thumma amma ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in islam we continue to discuss ayat al nifaq the signs of hypocrisy so that we stay away from being a pure hypocrite or a complete hypocrite a munafiq because allah said about the one who is a complete hypocrite he said inna al munafiqina inna al munafiqina fi dark al asfal min al nar wa lan tajida lahum nasira illa al ladina tabu wa aslahu wa atasamu billah wa aslahu dinahum wa wa akhlasu dinahum lillah fa ulaika ma al mu'minin wa sawfa yu'ti allah al mu'minina ajran azima Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, what means, verily the hypocrites, the munafiq, the hypocrites, they will be in the lowest, deepest part of the hellfire. No helper will they find for them, except those who repent from their nifaq. Any hypocrisy they have, they repent from it. And they do righteous deeds, and they hold fast to Allah, worshipping none other than Him. Allah, the one God, alone without partners, and they do good for Allah's sake only not to show off but so that Allah can be pleased with them and reward them then they will be with the believers and Allah will grant the believers a good reward we remind ourselves about that statement that the poet said that the scholars the ulama they quote that i acquainted myself where he said i acquainted myself with evil not for evil but in order to avoid it we must know what makes us from the quran and the sunnah what makes us have nifaq what attributes or what characteristics are traits of nifaq so that we can stay away from them <coughs> why you may say because there's types of nifaq at the nifaq and nifaq al-i'tiqadi nifaq in your aqidah and your creed this is hypocrisy in your belief this takes one out of the fold of islam but then there's nifaq al-amali hypocrisy in your actions this can lead you slowly and slowly but surely and surely to full hypocrisy the danger exists so we must continue to review those signs we've already discussed some to remind ourselves falsehood and lying being treacherous not loyal to the covenants you make fighting or arguing in an insolent matter breaking your promise being lazy in your ibadah and your worship hastening in your prayer rushing your prayer so your ruku' and your sujood are not proper riya having riya that minor shirk having riya <coughs> lacking the remembrance of allah allah's wala yaqrullah illa qalila as we mentioned that they barely remember allah except for a few moments of time slandering the ones who do righteous deeds mocking or making fun of the quran and the sunnah being a loose halaf everything is wallahi wallahi the one just so that someone believes you you say wallahi even if it's a lie 
and disliking to spend in the cause of Allah. These are all aspects, signs of nifaq, of hypocrisy in the heart, and ones that we, inshallah, will stay away from. So we'll continue from the list that the ulama have gathered, and we reach that a sign of nifaq is deserting and abandoning, abandoning the Muslims. Abandoning the Muslims and Islam by not seeking ilm, by not seeking knowledge, and by abandoning those who are weak trodden amongst the Muslim ummah. There are those who always flee from the ranks of the Muslims, criticize the Muslims. From the Muslims themselves they criticize, and they look down, and they make statements of why the Muslims are in the situation they are in. The weakness of the Muslims and their humiliation is because they do not believe that the honor and the strength resides with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the honor and the strength is for Allah. The taqwa is not in our hearts. That consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fearing Him, keeping our duty to Him, so we further ourselves from His punishment, it's not in our hearts. This is the reason for the demise, for the, the, for the weakness and the humiliation of the ummah and nothing else. It's not because of the West being stronger or having more military. The honor, the strength belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says, what means to Allah, belongs all the honor and to the Messenger وسلم, and to the believers. The honor and the strength is by Allah. Nothing happens except by Allah's permission. No harm can be done except without Allah's permission. Nothing happens of harm in the heavens and the earth except by Allah's knowledge and Allah's permission. And He's the all hearing, the all knowing. If Allah helps you, then there is none that can overcome you. So you may question where is the help of Allah? Well, where is our taqwa? Where is our sacrifice? From even the basicest of things, just coming and praying our prayers in the masajid. Why are we deserving of any help the way we live? Given the words of Allah, the final speech of Allah, the protected speech, the final book of Allah, and yet we still choose to follow our desires and our whims. But if Allah were to help us, there is no one who could overcome you, there is no one who could defeat you. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ And Allah says what means, and there is no help except from Allah, the Almighty, the All-Wise. No amount of planes or tanks or battalions or artillery or, or group of uh, army or whatever it may be is too strong to defeat Allah. It all resides, the honor, the might, the power, it resides with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we know this, then we will fear Allah the way He should be feared. But where is our abandonment of the Ummah? From India, to Kashmir, to Burma, to the Uyghurs in China, to Somalia and Sudan, Yemen and Palestine, all of the Muslim lands, I'm not missing one, I, I'm missing many. Where is that abandonment? We've left them off because we're not struggling, we're not... Where is that hadith? المؤمن للمؤمن كالبنيان يشد بعضهم بعضا Where is that implementation of the hadith of our Prophet ﷺ? The believer to the believer is like a building one part strengthens the other. When you abandon the Muslim, and I remind myself first, when we sleep tidy without a thought of even making dua for the Muslim who's struggling, who's suffering, who's being raped and killed and murdered and annihilated and burned without due right, then we have some aspect of hypocrisy in our heart. Part of this abandonment comes also to knowledge, abandoning the ilm. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمَ طَلْقُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيدَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ The seeking of knowledge is a farida upon every Muslim. When you abandon knowledge, you abandon your deen. When you abandon seeking knowledge, you are abandoning your deen. Shaykh Rabi'ah, حَفِيدُهُ Allah, may Allah preserve him. He said that, the believer is more in need of knowledge than food and water. You can go days without food and water. You can go days upon days. You may struggle, but you can live. 
But you need knowledge for every breath you take. Because if we were believers, if we were strong in our faith, if we truly believed that this life was suffering, we return to Allah, guess what? Every breath would be Alhamdulillah. Because there are some who aren't granted another breath. This is why we go back to the ulama, for the knowledge to understand it. But when we have the rus, halaqat, family nights, to come and learn the deen, and you don't see many of the people there, so either everyone's a scholar, or people are abandoning knowledge. In this deen, al-ilm, qabla al-qawl wal-amal, knowledge comes before speech and action. So this is signs from the signs of nifaq. Originating false numer- rumors and causing sedition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, لَإِن لَمْ, لَإن لم يَنْتَهِ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضْ والمر- وَالْمُرْجِفُونَ فِي, الم- في, الم- في الْمَدِينَةِ Allah says what means, truly the hypocrites and those in whose hearts is a disease and those who stir up sedition in the city. He grouped them, the ones who caused the sedition who spread false rumors. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the authentic hadith, he said, أَلَا أُخَبِّرُكُمْ بِأَكْبَرِ الْكَبَائِرِ He said, should I not tell you what is the largest of the biggest sins? Should I not tell you what is the most majorest of the sins? قَالُوا بَلَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ They said, tell us, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, الْإِشْرَاقُ بِاللَّهِ وَعَقُوقُ الْوَالِدَيْنِ He said, Shirk with Allah, associating anyone or anything with Allah. Even the twine you put around your wrist or around your neck, or you hang up in your homes, if you believe that's what's protecting you, that's shirk. The largest of sins, you must make tawbah from that. And being disobedient to the parents. Again, we see the parents being grouped, disobedient to them being grouped with shirk. This is from the most majorest of the sins. وَكَانَ مُتَّكِئًا فَجَلَسَ So he was laying down, so then he sat up and he said, وَقَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَشَهَادَةِ الزُّورِ وَقَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَشَهَادَةِ الزُّورِ وَقَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَشَهَادَةِ الزُّورِ And then he said, he added, and I warn you against false statements and false witness. I warn you against false statement and false witness. I warn you against false statement and false witness. And the narrator, he said, you know, I thought he wasn't going to be quiet. He kept saying it that many times. This is an aspect of nifaq, the one who constantly, what comes off their tongues is something which is false. Yes, I saw this, false witness, false statements, spreading rumors and sedition. They exaggerate the events and the happenings when there's an easy matter, they make it difficult. They make things bigger than it is just to to blow up a story so it can create some juice amongst the people. They hear something and quickly they'll go and tell someone, I saw someone do so and so. I saw someone do so and so. This person has aspects of nifaq, of hypocrisy in their heart, and they should seek to rectify themselves before they meet Allah with it. Finding fault with Allah's decree. When you find a fault with Allah's decree, like you say that something else should have happened, or it would have been better if it was done like this, وَالْعَيَادُ billah. قال الله عن المنافقين الذين قالوا لإخوانهم وقعدوا لو لو أطاعونا ما قتلوا. Allah says what means about the the hypocrites, the ones that say of their brethren who were killed in the, in the war, while they themselves sit at ease. If they only hadn't listened to us, they would not be dead now. When the Muslims went to Uhud, and the hypocrites they remained behind, they didn't go to fight. Because this was from their traits, the abandonment of the Muslims. And they, don't, they didn't go to fight. The Muslims that didn't listen went and fought and many of them died and were slain. And the hypocrites said, see if you listen to us, you wouldn't be dead right now. This statement in and of itself is finding fault with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ فَأَدْرَأُوا عَنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ الْمَوْتَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ So Allah says what means, say, avert death from your own selves, if you indeed are truthful. And this was a response that no one can avert death. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُمْ مُلَاقِيكُمْ The death which you flee from, it will come after you and find you and nobody can escape it. But this was from the traits of the hypocrites. 
being disappointed or finding a fault in Allah's qadr. And this is from the signs of hypocrisy. The Muslim submits to the divine decree of Allah. Whatever comes his way or her way, they accept it even if they don't see it good or even if they see it as bad. And this is from Iman, from one of the pillars of Iman. And تُؤْمِن بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ That you believe in Allah's qadr. The good of it and the bad of it. Allah says, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ نَقْرَأَهَا إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means no, more, no misfortune can happen on the earth or in your own selves except that it's recorded in a book before we bring it into existence. We meaning Allah and His grandeur, His majesty. Before it's brought into existence, this is easy for Allah. Everything from before the heavens and the earth were created was written down by the pen by Allah's constru- instruction till the end of time. So who are you to go and change it? Who are you to say, if I did this, it would have resulted in a different way? We've hated so many things that ended up being good for us. If we had any insight, any knowledge, we would have chosen different or known better. Allah knows and you do not know. We do not know. This decree is left to Allah. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقَصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allah says what means, indeed we're going to test you. You cannot get a degree in this life without going through struggle after struggle, test after test, sleepless nights, many hours in a room, studying something. Why is Jannah? Deserving to us without any fight, without any test, without any struggle. Even ourselves, we want to know when someone says they love us if it's true. You look at their actions, their demeanor, their words, their, you, you try to read them. Why shouldn't it exist the same thing for Jannah? Allah said, we're going to test you with fear. We're going to test you with loss of life, with loss of wealth, with loss of fruits. We're going to test you with hunger. Times where money is tight and you don't have enough to feed yourself with. But give glad tidings to the patient, those who patiently persevere, that whenever they're tried with anything, or afflicted with any calamity, they say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ To Allah we belong and to Him we return. Just this ayah, if you remind yourself every day that anything that goes wrong to you, you will drop it like a fly because you know that this is temporary. You know that what you have belongs to Allah. You know that what you don't have belongs to Allah. You know that what you covet that other people have belongs to Allah. So why are you wasting your energy? It all belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the hypocrite, he questions. The munafiq, he questions. He's not satisfied with the measure of Allah. How can this be? Why did this happen? I should have done so and so, then I could have had a better result. Like you know what would have happened to you. This is all a reflection that we should have daily to see if we really accept Allah's decree, His qadr, or if we oppose it. Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, By Allah, I do not care whether I ride on a mount of poverty or ride on a mount of wealth. Look at this statement, mashaAllah. This is how the friends of Allah, awliya Allah, this is how they are, they're pleased with Allah's decree. If I'm poor, alhamdulillah. If I'm struggling, alhamdulillah. And we see this in the hadith, we should remind ourselves with often, not just in Jum'ah, where the Prophet he said, عَجَلًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَهُ كُلُّهُ خَيْرٍ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ صَرَّاءَ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءَ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ we have an authentic hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, how amazing and strange is the believer's situation, their affair. And this is only the case for the believer. And if you pay attention to it, you will not find one who believes in Allah, except that they fit this description. And those who don't, or those who have, are having issues, or their iman may be low, may Allah strengthen all of our iman, then they are the ones who have issues with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, how amazing is the affair of the believer. 
No matter what happens, and this is only the case for the believer, no matter what happens to him or to her, if they're given some goodness, they thank Allah, they know that they might have been the tool, they might have been used by Allah to achieve the means, but it only came by Allah's permission. So they thank Allah, they praise Allah, they know that it only came to them because Allah said, Kun, said, be. And when, when Asadat Hubarra, and when they're uh, tried with some difficulty, some challenge, some trial, sabara, they're patient because they know Allah knows what's best for them. And this is better for them. How many times did we see someone wish for wealth and Allah granted it for them? And they became the worst of people. How many times did we see someone wealthy and Allah made them poor to humble them so they could abandon arrogance and the like and you saw them become the best of people. Allah knows and we do not know. My brothers and sisters in Islam, from the aspects of nifaq is bringing down the honor of the righteous. Allah says, سَلَقُوكُمْ بِأَلْسِنَةٍ حِدَادٍ أَشِحَّةً عَلَى الْخَيْرِ Allah says what means they will smite you with sharp tongues, with tongues that covet. When the righteous turn their backs, they attack with their tongues viciously, doing anything to take their honor away. I see this guy being liked by the people. I'm going to find some juice, I'm going to make up some stories till you get to hate this person. They're always talking bad about the righteous people, making fun of the righteous people, or who appear to be righteous, because really the righteous one, only Allah knows. A taqwa, like the Prophet said, he said, ha, huna. he said, it's in the heart. We don't know what's in the people's hearts. We fool ourselves with what's in our own heart. So how can you know what is in somebody else's heart? Do not get, pat yourselves on the back and, and, and raise yourselves and raise yourselves up on a pedestal. Allah knows best who has taqwa. But these people, they will go and they'll want to tear down someone. Someone does a good deed, they want to tear him down or tear her down to lower him or her in the eyes of the people. A man was gathering with one of the scholars, and he was backbiting somebody. So the scholar, he advised him, he said, bring to mind the day where your body will be shrouded, and the shroud will be drawn over your face, and your fisakrat al mouth you have just died and passed the agony of death. Remember, Remember the day where children, your wealth, they will not avail you except for the one who comes to Allah with the pure heart. Aqulu qali hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum adu Allah yaghfir lakum dhanubukum. Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nasta'hdiuhu wa nasallihu wa nasallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira wa ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, all of these signs we're mentioning, don't think if you possess them that you lose all hope. Don't think if you possess them that you're being labeled a hypocrite or whatever. But we have to be true to ourselves. We should look at ourselves in the mirror. If you looked at yourself in the mirror and your eyebrow was going this way and your hair was going another way and you didn't like the way you looked, you'd fix yourself. So fix your heart. Fix yourself for Allah. Fix yourself for the day, the meeting that will come. It's a promise. It's going to happen. Everything Allah said in the Quran has happened. It's happening. You see it. Everything that Nabi uh, al-Ummi, the unlettered prophet, the unlettered messenger, the one who couldn't read or write, everything he came up and warned up from the minor saints of the Day of Judgment and now into the major signs of the Day of Judgment. It's coming true in front of our eyes. Allah made it clear to us. Don't fool yourself. Prepare yourself. For that day where we will all be questioned by Allah. Review these signs. Know the evil of these signs of hypocrisy. <clears throat> and their characteristics. So you can avoid becoming from the hypocrites. And being in the lowest, darkest, worst place in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Just to get in another two signs insha'Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or one of the signs mentioned by the ulama. That the outward behavior contradicts what's in the heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشْهَدْ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَعْنَمُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولَهُ وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ Allah says, what means, when the hypocrites come to you, they say, we witness that you are indeed the messenger of Allah, Allah was telling 
the Prophet uh, he revealed that the hypocrites come and they say, we bear witness you are the messenger of Allah Wasallam. But Allah does know that you are indeed His messenger. And Allah witnesses that the hypocrites are indeed liars. And we know this from one of the first major signs we see. That when He speaks, He lies. This is from one of the biggest signs of nifaq, of hypocrisy in a person's heart. So seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this. And lastly, the fear of unpleasant events or incidents happening. Fearing that things will happen. The scholars have mentioned this is from the signs of nifaq. Allah said, يَحْسَبُونَ كُلَّ صَيْحَةٍ عَلَيْهِمْ They think that everything, that every cry is against them. And unfortunately we fall into this. That everything that happens, everything's against them, against, against us, against us, constantly in fear. Desiring the life of this world. They see money, they see houses and cars and this and that as a blessing. But they forget the blessing of Islam. They forget the blessing of Tawheed. That we are allowed to worship one Lord who is above the heavens and the earth. Above His arch, above His throne. But we can make sajda on the lowest point of the earth that we are touching on our forehead and our nose, on our palms, on our knees, on our toes, and He can hear us. And He can respond. And He says that He will respond. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْلَا أَنْ يَقُونَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً لَجَعَلْنَا لِمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ لِبَيُوتِهِمْ سُقَفًا مِنْ فِدَّةٍ وَمَعَارِجْ عَلَيْهَا يَظْهَرُونَ Allah says what means, were it not that mankind would have become one nation, one community of disbelievers <clears throat> only desiring this worldly life that we would have provided for those who disbelieve by the most merciful silver roofs for their homes and silver elevators by where they mount for their houses, doors and thrones of silver on which they would recline and adornments of, the, of gold. Yet all of this would be for nothing but the enjoyment of this world but in the end, the next life, the akhirah, jannah, that jannah, that paradise, that Allah said, no human eye can even, will, they will see what they have never seen, they will hear what they have never hear, heard, and it, they will see or get in jannah what cannot even occur to the human heart. This will be for the muttaqun, for those who are pious and keep their duty to Allah. ثم قال الله إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن لهم الجنة and Allah says what means indeed Allah has purchased from the believers their souls and their wealth that for them if they give this to Allah back to Allah because Allah gave you your soul and He gave you your wealth if you give it back to Allah then for them will be Jannah that paradise beneath beneath which rivers flow everything you ever could have wanted and the grandest surprises to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It would have been too easy if we were not tested, if everything was freely given to us. But this deen is about sacrifice. This religion is about sacrifice. Proving you want Allah to be pleased with you. Proving you want Him to love you. Proving you want to be an inhabitant of His Jannah and to see His face. It's about sacrificing the pleasures of this world for the unseen pleasures of the faith of Afan, for the unseen pleasures of the hereafter. And this is Iman. But the hypocrite is in fear of the events of this life, how it will befall them, and cares about peace and security here only. They fear the earthquakes. They fear the hurricanes. And we can see the damage they do. Everyone at one point will be fearing whether they'll lose their home, or whether they'll lose their, their job, or whether they'll lose their family members when these disasters happen. But there ain't no mother nature behind it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one behind it. So in it, when you fear those things, make sure you're fearing Allah. Because many of us fear those things. We fear someone stealing something from our home or breaking into our home. But how many of us truly every day fear being questioned by Munkar and Nakir in the grave? To who is your Lord? What is your religion? Who is the Prophet that was sent to you? How many of us fear the day of resurrection that we'll have no shade? Because the only shade that day is Allah's shade. How many of us fear Yom al Qiyamah that Allah, He will expose our sins to all of mankind? Because we used to backbite and expose people's sins in this life. 
How many of us sit every day and fear that our scale, the scale when it comes out, the mizan, when it weighs our deeds, that the heavy deeds won't outweigh the good deeds? How many of us sink every day and fear that when we cross the surat of Jahannam, which is sharper than the sword, that we won't be able to cross it and we will fall into Jahannam? We fear everything else in this life. But we need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what can become of us by our actions. A few quick announcements insha'Allah and then uh, we will do the salah. There's a sister's potluck this Sunday in the social hall after Zuhr time, which is at 1.30, from pretty much 2 to 4 p.m. in the social hall. So encourage your wives and your daughters insha'Allah to attend. It's for sisters only. There is some trees and plants. Jazakum al khair to those brothers and sisters and kids. May Allah reward you all who came out last weekend and helped plant. The, the landscaper was shocked. He's like, I thought we were going to be here till 4 and we were done, alhamdulillah, by 9 because so many brothers and sisters came out. There's still some plants left to, that we have to get into the ground. And they're all marked out. We're going to, inshallah, pray Salat al Fajr, go outside. One of the brothers will prepare some coffee and tea. Uh, no food this time, so we don't get lazy, inshallah. Then we'll cross the street for those who can do it, and finish the planting. So this is a good way to get sadaqah. We don't need 50 people, you don't have to spread it and all that. Just come inshallah, and let's uh, help wrap up the landscaping. It's looking beautiful, mashallah, by Allah's permission. Lastly, next Friday will be uh, October 7th, family night, from Maghrib to Isha. Recitation and explanation of Surah Qaf, or a portion of it. Uh, because the weather is starting to get colder, we're going to have the food as a dinner as a barbecue. In the parking lot, starting at 5.30, bi'ithnillah. We'll conclude by Maghrib, inshallah, and can come for the dars. Salat al-Isha changes to 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Try to come to the masjid. Try not to be lazy in your worship. Bring your sons. Bring them to the masjid. Bring your children to the masjid. Let them pray their prayers here. Inshallah, we can get stronger and stronger and stronger. And may Allah rid us of all this nifaq. So that we have not a trace of it when we meet Him. No arrogance, no pride, nothing that we can meet Allah with except good deeds and our good intentions. Allah makhfil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat. Al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat. Ya Amin Hamad Amwad. Inna ka anta sami'in qareem al-Majib al-Da'wad. Ya Maqallib al-Sumir al-Fatihun ala deenik. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Azzati Amma Yusufun wa Salaman ala al-Mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.